Hi, welcome to the Weeping Wall demo. My name is Akil, and this is my very first plugin. I'm really excited to show you how it works. First, what is Weeping Wall? Weeping Wall is a collection of microloopers that detect input and record automatically. Each looper can be desynchronized, either intentionally or randomly, and can be repitched, reversed, whatever you want from it. A uh, weeping wall can function more as a delay or more as a looper, and I've designed it to be modular and hopefully fit into whatever workflow you'd like from it. But first, I want to talk about why I built this thing. As a musician, I've had plenty of experiments with different pieces of hardware, and I've come up with a lot of techniques and different practices that I like to use in my own compositions. However, I've found that these techniques aren't really possible outside of the realm of hardware. I wanted to build something for myself and for others that I felt like brought the ethos that I found in the hardware realm more into the digital realm, especially for those who don't like working with hardware or it's not really uh, conducive to their workflow or maybe hardware is too expensive. I wanted to try to bring some of these techniques and make them much more accessible. One of the things that I found that hardware is really good at, at least for me, is creating ambience, atmosphere, space. And I find this really inspiring when I'm creating a composition. I wanted to build something that helped me do that within the DAW, when I'm away from my hardware, or if I need to iterate on a composition or whatever. And furthermore, historically I've found that it's much easier to start with ambience and atmosphere and create a composition from that than vice versa. I wanted to build something that could help you take an existing composition and just add a little bit more space or atmosphere to it. So that's the impetus behind Weeping Wall. It's designed as an ambience generator or something that will just listen to what you have to say and repeat some words and phrases back to you. I hope that it'll be a collaborator for you and something that becomes a valued tool in your toolbox. Okay, so let's get into the main features of Weeping Wall. There are six main controls around the perimeter here. The first one is threshold. The threshold is the volume that the input has to meet to begin recording a loop. If I play a note on the piano, you'll see that there's a volume indication, but we didn't meet the threshold volume. If we pull the threshold volume down, however, You can see that our note met the threshold volume and therefore a loop was recorded of it. The size of that loop is controlled by looper size. This control doesn't affect existing loops, but it affects new loops that are created. You can see that these two loops have totally different lengths and are free to phase against each other. If you want to pronounce that effect even further, you can use the jitter control. The jitter control randomly contracts each loop on each of its playbacks. The timing of them is now totally unpredictable and they're free to phase against each other however they want. The decay rate is how long loops are held. By default, this is infinite. This makes Weeping Wall act more like a looper, but if you'd like it to act a little bit more like a delay, you can pull down the decay rate, and loops will smoothly fade out after that length of time. At maximum, it becomes infinite again. There are two independent volume controls. Here, I'm using Weeping Wall as a send effect, so I have the dry volume all the way down, and I have the wet volume at 50. This ranges from 0, which is silent, to 100, which is the exact volume that it came in at. There are three more controls down here. The first of which is the number of loopers. You can have between 1 and 5 loopers. If all of the loopers are occupied, then the oldest one will be replaced with a new incoming loop. Loops can be uh, repitched, 
plus or minus one octave, and loops can be reversed. I want to mention a couple of gotchas that might trip up a new user. The first of which is one thing that I already mentioned. The looper length only applies to new loops. So changing this won't affect existing loops. There's also an issue of volume that you should be aware of. With up to five loopers playing at once, the volume of these loops can stack up and accumulate very quickly. Weeping Wall has been outfitted with a wet volume to help you adjust for this, but you should be aware that clipping is possible. Weeping Wall has a basic limiter installed, but this can still be exceeded. If you do find that your output is clipping, the wet volume should help you dial that in. There's one aspect of the recording behavior that might be confusing to new users. There's one aspect of the recording behavior that might be confusing to new users. This is in how the volume detection works with held sounds. I've switched over to a synthesized sound for this. You can see that this held note stays over the threshold volume. However, it does not continue to record new loops. This is an intentional behavior to avoid one held tone or chord from filling up all five of your loopers at once. In this way, only one phrase will go to one looper at a time. Once that volume has fallen back down below the threshold, recording will be re-enabled for subsequent notes, chords, or passages. Okay, so let's get into a handful of patch ideas as well, just to get you started. This first example is one of my favorite ways to use Weeping Wall, which is to use it as a kind of ambient space generator. I'm feeding it a simple piano, and I've put the result of Weeping Wall into a large reverb. What this gives me is kind of a shimmering pad that morphs as I continue playing and loops get replaced. It sounds like this. This next example processes the output of Weeping Wall. Weeping Wall is designed as a modular tool. It doesn't have a built-in reverb or tempo syncing or anything like that, but it plays nicely with other tools that do. In this case, I've put the output of Weeping Wall into this free plugin, S Pulsar by Solider Sound. This plugin basically adds a side chain pumping effect. You can hear what it sounds like here. The output of Weeping Wall is not clocked, but by pulsing it in this way, we can kind of trick our ear into thinking that it is. As these loops phase against each other, the result of them still seems coherent to our ear because they're pulsing and side chaining in unison. You can accomplish this with any kind of tremolo effect or automation. For this reason, I really like using Weeping Wall as a send effect because that means that I can process the audio going into it or coming out of it without affecting my dry signal. In this case, I've put a gate after a weeping wall. This allows me to kind of smooth out the attack on 
the sounds that are coming out of Weeping Wall, which in this case are a piano. If I want Weeping Wall to behave a little bit more atmospherically, I can use something like this to shave off that initial transient. You can also do this before Weeping Wall as well. And finally, I want to show how Weeping Wall can be used with automation or modulation from something like Ableton CV. In this case, I'm using an Ableton LFO to control the threshold knob of Weeping Wall. This might seem like a weird choice at first, but you can use automation and modulation to enhance your creative process. In this case, something like this can slow down the chances that Weeping Wall will capture any input. If I start to play a piano passage, You can see that not every phrase was captured as the input and the threshold were playing this kind of cat and mouse game back and forth. You could also use this with a random LFO, make it even less likely or unpredictable that something will happen. You can also use kind of an inverse of this effect by modulating the volume of the input going into Weeping Wall. In this case, I've put the S pulsar in front of Weeping Wall, and I've switched back to a synth sound that has a constant held volume. We saw this earlier. A held sound would not trigger recording of multiple loops because it was staying above the threshold the whole time. But now, thanks to the S pulsar, the volume of the input is kind of bouncing up and down, and it now has triggered multiple loops. All right, well, that's it from me. Thank you so much for watching and for your interest in Weeping Wall. Like I said, this is my very first plugin, and it's really cool to see all of the adoption so far. Uh, if you've already grabbed Weeping Wall, thank you so much. If not, I hope that this video might help clarify some things about the product, and maybe you'll find a place for it in your setup as well. Thank you for watching and supporting. Take care.